week's episode of One Piece, I kind of figured that a lot of these episodes are going to just not be what I want to see fully necessarily because of how they usually put forward uh, a lot of the setup, but with this week and how it's set up at least, I'm looking ridiculously forward to what's coming. Um... We got the full backstory on Smile and how it was contributed throughout the whole entire village, why it is the way it is, and pretty much why we're going to see uh, Sanji and Zoro pretty much throw everything they can at the couple of people at the front gate, seeing how it's going to be tough to get the daughter out of here without anyone noticing her, or at least anyone pursuing her afterwards so this has kind of become a normal thing in Wano them interfering with stuff and then happening to either A run away or B just finish the fight and end up seeing where they leave off but with how things have been going lately there's not a lot of people that aren't on par with Zoro and Sanji or even stronger than them but Zoro and Sanji can hold their own and pretty much defend themselves so they can get away we haven't seen many indicators that they can actually just full blown defeat these people and move on it seems like they're going to be an adversary that they would have to take on even even the killer fight but Zoro was nerfed then he didn't even have uh, all the blades that he would want to have in that fight and I believe it's still the same thing Nothing changed uh, even after he ran into the person that took his blade besides the matter that he took someone else's to protect himself pretty much right um, so it's kind of it's kind of still in the air what he can do with what he's got right now like how powerful is Zoro with just those two blades he can fight a person who is uh, pretty under the influence of the laugh as we can tell so I think that's already another telling sign that people aren't at their best if their only emotions they can express and stuff is laughter and uh, we see how much the villagers are sweating from it but pretty much what happens is Kaido wanted to get some fruit to make his power stronger but the only people who are going to end up with that power was uh, 1 out of 10 so if you're just one of those lucky people that actually end up getting the powers you're a gifter and there's a whole entire group of people that are just failed and have no chance of becoming these powerful uh, gifters already so they're just they're called pleasures and they still are going to throw their lives away because they get fed and you know they treated like they're one of the uh, one of the members of Kaido's group but at the end of the day you're stuck with how everybody's going about handling this is everybody who was poor wound up being super hungry and just dying from wanting to eat so what does the great Orochi do for these people he sends out all of the fruit that have already failed have been known to fail and sends them to the villagers now these villagers have to either eat this or die so what do they do they be courteous they share it with everybody that they can make sure everybody gets some even the people who couldn't get out of bed to even find out about the apples just to come to find out that that's kind of been the plan all along is to have these villagers eat it and maybe at the end of the day if they're needed turn them into pleasure members as well that are just failed devil fruit eater uh, smile fruit eaters so pretty dark stuff especially seeing how it was like forced upon them in the case of it's either eat this or die and they gave them a plenty more than enough to suffice the whole entire village uh, so 
that started to go around but since the fruits are you know effective only to people that might get it I feel like some of the villagers should get it I feel like some of the fruits should have just failed because they failed not be, uh, because of the person that ate it not because of the fruit necessarily I think every single fruit should have a chance to transform uh, it just it all comes down to the actual e eater um, so maybe a whole bunch of villagers could actually become gifters and start protecting Wano after uh, everything starts popping off because seeing Luffy and seeing Zoro and Sanji doing what they're doing is what I expect um, acting completely out of emotion acting out of pure wanting to help and to see Sanji and Zoro about to work together definitely has me excited for the future of the next week's episode but regardless of all that I hopefully get to see a ridiculous amount of action and they don't just like run away because it feels like a lot of the Wano action is definitely cut short especially since in the preview I already saw Sanji carrying the daughter and we know Zoro was the one that actually saved her so why is Sanji now the one holding her and dipping so I don't know it sounds like Zoro might be getting left behind because Sanji could straight up like fly so uh, he is the best capable one of getting out of that situation with the Haas with someone who's being targeted you know the hostage of the situation and actually being able to save them so I'm actually interested to see how this plays out seeing how they're just doing this in the broad daylight and I'm guessing it's gonna pump up Luffy even more and hopefully slaps Queen in his face but Regardless, let's get to see some Sanji and Zoro action. Please let it be the whole episode. <laughs> Please. Um, I don't think I can fight this female chick. She's just gonna... I, like, throw love at her or something. Yep. But anyway, I hope y'all are having a good one. I kind of didn't care for everything that was happening when I first watched it. And I felt like it was just... Uh, it was the classic what you will call it again the classic version of what we see One Piece doing and that's pretty much stalling and milking everything so this was a good amount of milking it wasn't all that bad but at the same time it still nonetheless felt like this was a, a story that they could have told these guys about but I guess they saved it for the best moment right when someone's about to get executed and you know tell the gospel of what's going on with everybody so regardless of the timing and using the episode for setting up like the setup gods one piece has become over the times that's what this is and hopefully the setup is ridiculously hype that we get next week so let's just look forward to that i will right, we'll talk to you guys in the next one let me know what you think about smile and how that changes your feeling towards the poor people of Wano or just getting Wano out of the hands of Orochi in general. So we'll see how that plays out. And, uh, and Kaido. Seems like Orochi's just the figurehead. He's just the person who's lived in uh, Wano forever. And Orochi is the one who's supposed to be the actual Shogun and the leader. So we'll see how this all plays out. I'll talk to you guys in the next one though. Alright. Later.